Entertainment Committee. <laughs> it is Tuesday, April 16th. Go through roll call. I am present. I'll wait to mark Councilmember Cap absent, Councilmember Eastlick, <coughs> Councilmember Ewing. I am here. Councilmember Gab. Here. Councilmember Hancock is not present. Councilmember Taylor will not be present today. Vice Chair Vo. Here. And Councilmember Welsh. Present. Always last but never least. Yes, that's right. We're just going to go. Okay. Okay, so today we do have someone here for uh, public comment. So public pursuant to Council Rule 28 and state law, public comment is limited to matters that are, are about items on the agenda. You may only speak about items that are on the agenda. And today we have Steve Ryder, who's here to speak on RS 2024-351. That is correct. In opposition. In its and current form, correct. In its current form. Okay. Yes. And you have two minutes, sir. Please share with us. Okay. I find the resolution to be overly broad and have some very big concerns about it. In Section 1, it refers to all these various departments and everything else, but I do not think any of them have jurisdiction over creating extremely low-income affordable housing. And that is really the key. If you're going to solve homelessness, you have to have a place to go. And I don't think any of these departments can play a role in that. I mean, that is really a fundamental problem. So are we going to take a punitive approach? Are we going to say, hey, you're here, but you can't be here, but you can't be here either. And so I'm looking for solutions. And there's going to be a report that's going to be done, I guess, in 2025. But it says in Section 3, uh, the fifth line, the council further requests that immediate actions be taken to remedy the issues identified in this resolution. Well, this is a pretty broad resolution, and I don't know what immediate actions, what that means. And so I have a big concern about that. There's a lot of people who would say, oh, boy, if you have a place for me to go that I have a key and I can go to, I'll go there. But I just want to point out to everybody here, if you go to a shelter, you're still homeless. You're still homeless. So what solves homelessness is housing. And I'm a big advocate of public housing. I think that's where extremely low income people have to go. And the federal government, we've had a lack of leadership there. But I want to encourage the council, if you're going to do something, because we're in a budget cycle right now. If you go out there and tell the mayor, hey, we need to go out and get some extremely low income housing. If you don't like my plan, create your own plan. I don't care. But just do something. Don't go out there, and the community's going to go out there and say, hey, we got this, we're getting rid of all the homeless people along the river or whatever else. But where are they going to go? I don't think that's a solution. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. We will now move into resolutions. There's no one else on public comment. So thank you very much for taking your time, sir. Good to uh, our first resolution is RS 2024-351, Coopin, Horton, Huffman, and others. A resolution requesting certain departments of the Metropolitan Government provide a comprehensive analysis of recommended changes to increase the safety, security, housing resources for the unhoused, and cleanliness of the properties surrounding the Cumberland River within the downtown interstate loop. And we do have a letter from Councilmember Coopin requesting a deferral for two meetings. Can I get a motion? Move, move for uh, second. Deferral for two meetings. Okay. Second. Uh, is there any discussion on this? I think I think that gentleman who, mm -hmm. who spoke made some good points, and I'm glad that we're having this deferral so that we can take the time to, to figure out how we might tweak this. Excellent. With that being said, all in favor of the deferral for two meetings, say aye. 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 Too late. Too late. Too, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Council it's Member Eastlick. I don't believe the chair has recognized you. <laughs> so literally, you walked in <laughs> just as the vote was done. And voted to support your deferral for two meetings. Ah, so. thank you so much for your support. You did miss a public comment individual mm -hmm. who is out in the hallway, and if he hasn't already stopped you, you I've, I've like heard you. him in the other other committees, and we are recognizing his concerns. Okay. Excellent. Well, then, excellent. Yeah. That's what we wanted yeah. to hear. Perfect. Don't you love it when you walk in and you get to walk right out? <laughs> That's that it. Great, great job, everyone. Thank you so much. All righty. <laughs> All right. How many of us are there? Six? Okay. Six. Yes. All right. Motion passes. 
two meeting deferral. Cool. Moving right along, we have a lot today. Okay. RS-2024 Porterfield Tomb Styles and Welsh accepts a grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Nashville Public Library to provide access to and circulation of special materials formatted for individuals who are hearing impaired. Can mm -hmm. I get a motion? Excellent. Second. Any discussion? This seems very straightforward. Excellent. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Our next resolution is RS-2024-362, Porterfield Tombs, Styles, and Others, accepts an education and literacy grant from the Nashville Public Library Foundation to the Nashville Public Library for various education and literacy programs, including Bringing Books to Life, Adult Literacy, and Be Well. Move. Second. Second. Okay, English not required by me. All righty. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, passes six in favor, zero against. Number four, RS-2024-363, accepts a grant from the Centennial Park <coughs> Conservancy to the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation to provide funding for one part-time position in the Parthenon Museum store. Can I get a motion? Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Seems pretty straightforward. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No abstentions, no nays, six in favor, zero against. Number five, RS-2024-364, sponsored our Porterfield Tomb Styles and Welsh, accepts a grant from the Tennessee Titans, Tennessee Football Incorporated, to the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation to continue the Titans NFL Flag League in spring of 2024 with funding to be used for registration fees and scholarships. Move. Second. Any conversation? Any discussion? Council Member Gadd. Uh, Chairwoman, is, I don't know if uh, anyone is here to be able to answer this question. I'll go ahead and pose it, and if I need to seek an answer later, but um, what are, does this grant pay for the total amount of fees for this program? Uh, Mr. Roten, are you able to speak to that? We have our finance director here. <coughs> I mean, we, <laughs> Kevin, you're in a new department and already they have figured out you're problematic. Um, so, if you don't mind, can I clarify my question? Yes, go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, so, um, I'm, I'm just curious if the grant is enough to pay for all the costs, I'm sure with the exception of the cost for Metro employees to be present. I'm just curious. If but this is specific for the, they're specific for scholarships and for the uh, registration fees for the kids to actually register for the Okay. League. Um, so it's scholarships <coughs> as well as the registration fees. So the students that participate or the young people participate, do you mind if I ask another question? Go ahead. Um, uh, they don't have, there's no cost to the, the students because of this? Is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And it's a countywide <coughs> program? Yes. Yeah, I'm just not familiar with the program, so that's wonderful. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Thank, Thank you, you Councilmember Gad. I, I, I would ask. Is this a new program? I feel like it, I saw it last year, but how long has it been going on? This, is, this will be the second. Okay, so I'm not crazy. It is the second year. Okay, well, good. But. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, no. Motion passes. <laughs> Number six. RS 2024 365 Council Members Porterfield Tombs and Styles, our sponsors and others, accepts a joint grant from the Tennessee oh, Titans okay. Foundation yes. in partnership with Horizon to the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation to provide technology and digital support to McFerrin Park and Coleman Park Community Centers. Move. Second. I would like to interject that I said at 439 or 441, Clay Cap will arrive. <laughs> it's like it's 439 on the dock. Thank you, did sir. You, did you win? Yeah, yeah, I, I did. Yeah. Yeah. So you owe her 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bet. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going for predictable. So. Are there, is there any discussion on this as we just kind of asked? Okay. Council Member Gaff. May I ask it one more question? You may. Go ahead. So um, I'm just curious if I can get an example of um, the tech and digital support that might be, that this grant might be used for. I don't know who what this is. Is this, I believe, the finance director? I'm not sure who the, yeah. Is, is that, this is this under? Titans. Well, I mean, it's the, the community center will assess the needs. I mean, they're not okay. specific in the grant, but it will just be for if they establish a computer lab, if they need laptops. Oh, that's great. At the community center? No, okay, wonderful. Yeah. 
Thank you. All right. You're good. Any other questions? All right. With that, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Yes. Six in favor. Aye. Passing. And zero against. Okay. Bills on second <coughs> reading. BL 2024-301. Uh, council uh, sponsors Vo Porterfield and Styles amend section 2.78.010 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to authorize the Board of Fair Commissioners to adopt rules and regulations to enable sponsorships of the divisional fair, expo center events, flea markets, auto racing, and other programs, events, projects, facilities, and sites at the fairgrounds in Nashville. Move. Second. Thank you. Um, my first question on discussion. Can you break this down for us? How sure. is this different from what exists right now? Yes. yes. So this um, currently only authorizes the board, the fair board, to accept sponsorships at ten thousand dollars. So okay. if it, so, for example, say there was a sponsorship for twenty thousand, it'd have to come through council. This allows, and now we're changing it from ten to fifty. So then it allows the fair or the fair to keep going and like do their sponsorships. And and bring in funds for their programming without adding to our agenda correct and I'm here for that yeah, correct. okay so and you know we base this on you know looking at parks and like what their threshold is so it's actually getting the fair board to where probably they should have been a long time ago so okay. that's what we were trying to do oh well, fantastic thank you so very much Councilman Rivo. any other questions all right uh, with that being said all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. And we are now seven. seven. Am I not crazy? Okay. Awesome. <laughs> seven in favor, <laughs> zero against. <laughs> Next bill, BL 2024. 302, Styles, Welsh, Gad, and others amend section 2.112.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to amend the purpose of the Metropolitan Nashville Arts Commission. Move. Second. Second. Okay, so I'll give a brief explanation for those that are wondering. This amends the language in the code about um, Metro Arts so that it references the equity statement that they are currently operating with. Right now it's just within their own policy, but it's not in the code. So it adds that. Any questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome sauce. Any opposed? No abstention. Seven in favor, zero against. Random question. When we show up a little later than usual, we add to our numbers. Can we just as a slate say that all of these are seven? Or do I have, right, when I give during con in council, like You're the ones that are six? If you're going to give the count, I would give <coughs> the six. You could say that they're all approved unanimously. OK. Just wanted to be clear on that. OK. Thank you much. All right, B.O. 2024-305, and or, uh, sponsors Styles and Taylor, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Department of Parks and Recreation <coughs> to the deascension of the pre-Columbian collection from the Parthenon. Move. Second. Thank you. Questions? Okay. <laughs> I share what it is. Okay. I don't well, I figured the question would be, what is it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what does it so basically what happened is that the Parthenon discovered pre-Columbian art in their collection and said, oh my gosh, responsibly, hallelujah, and thank you so much. It has been lovely working with you. Thank you for everything that you've done. Um, basically said, we owe it to ourselves to have integrity and to give this artwork back. And so this has never been done before, so I, I do... <clears throat> I want to commend our guest, and I'm going to let you speak in a second, yes. because she did what no one has ever done before, is to figure out a process to be able to return artifacts to their original country. There was nothing for her to find when she started this process. And so Thursday, i give a plug, we are going to be celebrating um, this at the Parthenon at 6 o'clock. Love for everybody to come out and celebrate the great thing that we are doing as a city. So, and, and with that, um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and just talk a little bit about the journey, if you would. <laughs> um, so, uh, my name is Bonnie Seymour. I am the registrar and assistant curator at the Parthenon. And um, just to go, I guess, from the very beginning, pretty much my first day, Lauren gave me a tour, and she's like, and this is all our pre-Columbian stuff. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I can't be here. <laughs> so after doing an extensive inventory, I started asking questions like, okay, 
who do I need to talk to? Where do these need to be going? Because my first thought, I never had any other idea. These have to go home. That's where they belong. I went through a lot of research through our, our archives and everything, all of our paperwork to find out how they got there. Found that it wasn't great. <laughs> um, got in contact and, and with a museum in New Mexico who had the same problem. Thankfully, she spoke fluent uh, Spanish, so she got me in contact with the consulate, who eventually got me in the contact with the Atlantic consulate. And I've been talking with them. We've been talking with Metro about getting the right paperwork done, and now we're here. Wonderful. <laughs> so, and we've been talking with the Hispanic community to make sure that we represent them properly and get their input into the exhibit. And we're excited. So. Um, um, yes, Council yes. Member Eastlick. How many pieces? Approximately two, uh, 200 and, no. Oh, yeah, 244 right now. I Any just, background on them as far as what you can tell us, how they got here or I, yeah. what, how they got away? So what happened is a man named John Montgomery, Dr. John Montgomery, uh, had a hobby of going to West Mexico. He had a summer home. <coughs> he go and do excavations. And when I say excavations, he had probably... Based on what I learned recently, actually, he probably had a man on the ground who went out and found places that hadn't been excavated or anything yet, found certain pieces, and informed John Montgomery that this would be a good place to find things. Wow. He'd go find things, take it, and leave. And he would either collect it for himself, donate to friends, give it to friends, or um, sell it. And he made friends with John Parker, the former director of the Parthenon back in the 60s. He also, Parker also had a small collection of his own. They made friends and they worked out a deal of donation. Um, and <coughs> that's how we got a lot of it. I also have some pieces from an Edgar York and I have no information on him. Mm -hmm. so Can we just give you another round of applause for your integrity? Because that's yeah. how we of how we willingly stole, right. then just donated and just kept and wow. Well, yeah. it's yeah. the material big. I've been in the collection for many years. We've talked about deaccessioning it. We've talked about repatriating it. But there was nothing in um, the Metro Code that would allow us to do so. And really, it was the current Parks Administration that really helped us, that connected us with the right person in Metro Legal who said, OK, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to start with a change in the ordinance. We're, gonna, we're going for code, so we will be back. Because uh, the accessioning is just a normal thing that museums need to do. This rep the rep repatriation piece is special, though. And so um, we've gotten lots of help from uh, Metro Parks. Uh, leadership and also from Metro Legal, so shout out Very to Very thankful folks. for them. Yeah. And you. also, so we have um, Jose Vera is, is one of the artists for this Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't seen his work, he's amazing, and he's from, of course, Antioch. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually originates from the same area that the pieces come from, too, so it's wow. like this cool And he's doing pieces That's that nice. are going to be yeah, up on Thursday eight, night. <clears throat> eight pieces of his, we've already hung them on the wall, and he's done a mural on the central column as well. Excellent. Vice Chair Vo, thank you so much. Um, thank you for your work. Um, I did just want to know, um, does this apply then to hopefully, like, if we ever have this process again, everyone can, like, go through, um, or is this only specific to, like, so parks? Can y'all explain that a so bit more? The thing about repatriation is it can be specific case by case. So this is the only time we will have to do this. In this way, I do have some artifacts that are indigenous American that were supposed that in my paperwork say they were already returned, but they're not. They're in, I'm, but it's a very small thing, so I will have to go through NAGPRA for that. So you'll see me for that one too. Okay. But once this is settled, I will deal with that. This, once I've got this all settled, this will be the process any predecessors after me will take to get this done. And there may need to be another change in another ordinance. I mean, this was really, when we were looking to do a collections policy, sort of overall, and we got to that deaccession part, which is a part of any museum's policies, good practices, um, I, I believe it was you know, Metro EBID or Metro E surplus, and so that's the thing that always stopped us. So when this is complete, we'll go back 
and we'll work with Metro Legal again for a change in the code. But I believe that Library, Metro Arts, and the Historical Commission all have something in place that allows them to deaccession something with using museum best practices. Just for some reason, we didn't have one. I see. Okay. And it could just be that you know, within parks, we're a little bit of an, anom an anomaly, although we're not the only historic site. So I would think that if there's ever excavations done at Fort Negley, uh, you know, uh, on and on, that hopefully what we've done and what Bonnie's done for the Parthenon and for parks will be able to be used by other metro agencies. And that's what I was really asking, because I want to make sure you know, are we looking at, at this ordinance like holistically so that we're not doing it every time, but it's for all departments? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Vo. Any other questions? Yes, Councilor. Where, um, where are they going? Where are they going? <laughs> the plan is to send them to the INA, which is the Institute of Anthropology and Archaeology in Mexico City. Um, the Atlantic Consulate is talking about coming up, picking them up, and taking themselves. From there, I don't know. Uh, there has been talk of a museum being built for them specifically oh, wow. uh, through, through connections that Jose has. And I would encourage that because a lot of Mexican museums are very full. And I worry that once they go back to Mexico, they'll disappear. Um, they mean they have to go back, but I would really like to keep some kind of connection between the Hispanic community here and the pieces because I don't think there is any other in all of national, all of Tennessee. Yeah. Oh, so. we need to have a Mexican art museum. <laughs> like Chicago does. Like Chicago does. <laughs> and we shall we have a museum in here in Nashville. That's right. Yeah, yeah, we should talk to them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, part of the thing that I think can be challenging from the museum perspective, too, is that once the pieces get repatriated, you no longer have control over, I mean, they could be sold to a private collector, they could be go into a museum's collection and not be out to be exhibited, but it just becomes not your, it's not our responsibility to see what happens to them. And, and can you share your name with Oh, us? sure, I'm sorry, my name's Lauren Belford, I'm the director. Of the <laughs> Thank you ladies very, very much for being here. Thank you for doing this. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Me too. Thank you so much. So with that, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Good. No one's opposed. Nobody abstained. Okay, seven in favor, zero against. And we are complete with our legislative agenda, which brings us to, we have two guests. One is uh, Greenwood, and our other guest, uh, Cindy Harrison, of course, Mr. Roten, and then we have Trey. Herndon, who is here from the Entertainment Newly Formed Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission. He's going to talk to us a good one, um, about how the commission is going, but also what their budgetary need is, because we also created a, an office for music, film, and entertainment. And so we only partially funded that, and they are working on the budget right now, as well as the job description for the executive director. So at this point, I will turn it over to Cindy to share with us how Greenways are going. Yeah, sure. Happy to. Uh, Cindy Harrison. I'm the... Uh, Assistant Director of Metro Parks over at Greenways and Other Space. And good to see uh, all of you. And some of you sit on our Greenways and Other Space Commission, so we're really glad to, to have you here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of give a broad overview and, and happy to try to try to field questions. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, something that you all helped us with. This has been over a year now, but we have the five new positions that were um, allocated to the Green West Division have all been filled, and we're very, very happy about that. Um, traditionally, the most most staff number we've had has been three, and, and there was um, a good bit of time when it was just myself or myself one other person. So there's very limited amount of work that could be done in, with that number of staff, so having expanded, we just added um, our fifth person about two months ago, and um, we're actually backfilling a position because someone was promoted. Uh, we're hoping she'll start this week. We're working on that. So, anyway, thank you. Um, the de department as a whole is working on our uh, plan to play update. So, the Parks and Recreation uh, Greenways and Open Space Master Plan that was done in 2016 17 is being updated, just a mid, midway update, and there'll be a pretty good focus on greenways and open space for that. So um, 
really happy to be involved in that. In-house, kind of in prep for that, our team is looking at evaluating all of the Greenway corridors that are in plan to play and some that weren't in there but need to be. And we're looking at all the property along so most of those river corridors. And so we're looking at all the property on both sides of those corridors and also the city central greenway which some of that moves away from the waterways and just doing an analysis trying to get ahead of um, the game a little bit understanding that's a lot of parcels i wish i had the total of my data in front of me but just understanding what that land looks like which areas are going to be more suitable for a greenway trail um i think you know but just just for the record the parks department doesn't condemn property we don't use them in that domain so when we are expanding our greenway system, we know generally where we want it to be, but we um, don't always have the right to be there. So we do have some policy that allows us, when a parcel is being subdivided and developed, to um, acquire an easement that covers the floodway and 75 foot buffers when it's along waterways. And that's great. Um, we're working to some more robust policy that at some point we'll come to you on as we go through plan to play we'll be working on that um, we also have an opportunity to work with rezoning projects so SP projects where entitlements are being um, requested we're working with developers there to have a place to put a green wave it's planned um, so we operate in kind of in two worlds we have the capital budget funded green wave projects and then we work with uh, these with developers for opportunities to um, expand the system. And they both keep us really busy, uh, which is great. Uh, so that's happening, and I'll get into those projects here in just a minute. But um, along with the corridor analysis, we're also, as part of Plan to Play and a request um, a year ago from the Greenways Commission, we'll be doing data collection. We don't have data on users. We have some that we've done ourselves, just you know, unofficially counting who's using the greenways. But we really want to know, and, and the commission wants us to know, who's using the greenways. Are they riding their bikes? Are they walking? Um, you know, what are the, which ones are the most used? We get those kind of questions all the time, and we don't really have good answers for that. We know they're all busy, <laughs> and um, but that's not a great answer. So. We'll be doing that as well um, as part of Plan to Play. But I'll just run through, and y'all stop me if you have questions, just flag me down, because I could tell Kevin I could talk about Greenways all afternoon, so um, I get tired of hearing myself talk sometimes. But I'll just touch on the major pro capital projects first that we have going on right now. So the Charlotte Quarter Rail with Greenway is a project that we're, um, I would say, in the middle of planning. And this is going to basically parallel the Cheatham County Rail Authority rail line. So this is in North Nashville. And it starts at 28th Avenue and moves in an easterly direction over to Rosa Parks. It's not a rail to trail. The rail line will continue to operate. And um, it also, the rail goes on up to Cheatham County. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fairly low activity rail line so it's suitable for um, a <coughs> side a greenway alongside it. Um, it's in an area that was very industrial and now is changing over a lot of um, commercial and residentials coming in. So we're working with the rail authority. We've identified uh, what we think will be a phase one route. We haven't officially put that out there yet because we're working with the rail line to utilize part of their property. So we need an easement from them uh, to install that greenway. So we're, we're coming in in a built environment trying to find a space to put a greenway. But we're getting close and we're, we're being, being very supportive. Close. I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on <laughs> yes. the rail authority. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we are very close and so I have high hopes for that. Uh, this, there's funding in place for at least a phase one of this project. So we're really anxious to start, uh, you know, finalizing construction documents. Right now we're just in the master planning phase, so we need to move on to that. Um, so anyway, that's, it's, all in all, it's, it goes east to west to those 28th to Rosa Parks. We also have a connector that goes along 16th Avenue up to um, 
Fisk University and then down to um, oh, I forget the name of the park Edmondson Park I almost forgot it um, and then also to Frankie Pierce Park along 10th Avenue some really great connections the connection from Frankie Pierce to Rosa Parks in the farmers market also connects the Gulch Greenway so there's some really amazing opportunities here and and that's all part of the city central greenway which is a loop system that we realize we had an, and we have enough greenways in place already to really start to fill in gaps and make a loop greenway around the, the uh, urban core with connections out into the community and that'll be when it's finished about 35 miles of greenway trail so that one is is very exciting it is challenging to come in and build a trail where there's already development. Uh, the opportunities are where there's redevelopment is to work with those developers and who are going to be in the space adjacent to where we want to be and uh, work with them to get a place to put the greenway. And we've done that in multiple places, been very successful. Um, Assurian's campus, that Gulch Greenway uh, was actually built and designed, built, and maintained by Highwoods Property, who owns that um, property. Frankie Pierce Park was another development we worked with uh, Boyle on that. The greenway behind First Horizon Park, which has been closed for years um, when it was for, when the stadium was built, the greenway became encapsulated by the fencing and ticketing controls around the stadium. So there were many days when you weren't able to access the Greenway, there was an event going on unless you had a ticket. So we we're working with a developer there, Portman Holdings. They're building a residential project kind of in left field, behind left field. And with that project, this is an SP project, they are building a, a bypass Greenway, so to speak. So it will be open 365 days a year and connect where the old Greenway the same connection to 3rd and 5th Avenue. Um, that's really important in and of itself, but also looking at the Charlotte Railway Trail and the connection to the farmer's market and opening up this connection behind the uh, baseball stadium and then over to the Oracle Bridge that um, it was planned to get us to the other side of the river. So, you know, first horizon part, that's a really short Greenway, but really important. Um, another short section that's really important for us is in front of the Parks uh, Department, it's headquarters, but also along Centennial Dog Park. It's an extension of the 440 Greenway. That too, via the 28th Avenue connector, will begin to will tie into the Charlotte Railroad Trail. So again, little pieces that we're trying to fill in gaps. Um, we have another project. So that project is in design for the 440 Park Plaza to Centennial. Charlotte Railway Trail is in design. We're also designing another section of the 440 Greenway that will connect Severe Park to Galline Park over to Browns Creek Park. Um, and just an assemblage of the 440 segment will be about seven and a half miles when it's complete. So phase one is done and we're working on phase two, which is actually two separate connections. Um, Opry Mills Connector, which is one I know y'all have heard about for a long time and it's, it's had its stops and starts. We're aiming for completion of those plans in July. And uh, a really great project that will connect the Opry Mills Mall campus to the pedestrian bridge. So giving the opportunity for commercial um, hotel, you know, all that business is out there and the people that come there to get downtown without being in their car, which is awesome. So my, <coughs> my one question for you is, do you have a monetary need for this year? And if you do, what is it? So that this committee can bear that in mind as we are getting ready to go into budget hunger games. Sure. Well, operating budget no, because we filled those positions. So, okay. and getting all this work done would just not be possible without those staff members. I just can't emphasize that enough. 
So it, right now with operating budget, no, we don't. When capital budget rolls around in the next capital budget, all these projects that are in design, uh, some of them have funding, uh, but we'll be looking and asking for funding uh, for those projects. And open space as well. Uh, that's the other side of what we do at Greenways is acquire open space not just for greenways but also for parks and many times we'll develop a park with a greenway or vice versa um, so, uh, yes council member gad and then council member did yeah. you have a continuation of that though i don't want to interrupt uh, no i was just going to say thank you for that and we'll take some more questions and then we're going to wrap up and i'll, I'll make mine really quick just to kind of put yep. a pin where we're going to follow up with you afterwards um up in district 24 and so i'm really excited i've got um a couple of potential sps that want to do some extension to the greenways around mm -hmm. richland creek and Great. so i want to continue yeah. to 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 talk about that and um a couple of other perhaps just kind of getting my mind thinking about some other projects so look forward to that i don't want to cut off the sure council. so we can always speak afterwards but well, I mean, we can speak afterwards as well, but um, I just, it just occurred to me to ask if in the, the interior section of the city, if we, um, on the open space side of the equation, if we ever have opportunity or are looking for opportunities to reclaim lighted um, lots and turn them into little pocket parks or green space so that we might... I don't know, push the balance of green space closer into the sections of the city that mm -hmm. I recently discovered in a, a um, uh, an interactive graphic that Nashville has a problem. That's, that's our problem zone, is, and it's not uncommon for, for cities. But Right. Well, the city's growing so quickly and development is happening. So we do look, look for those opportunities, and we use plan to play in the areas of need that have been identified kind of as a guideline. Um, so yes, is the short answer. And it's not just in the urban core, it's also as you get a little bit away from mm -hmm. the urban core. One um, partnership that we've utilized, which has been wonderful, is working with Metro Water Services on their volunteer, the FEMA volunteer flood buyout program, mm -hmm. where they purchase uh, properties and remove the structures and then we've been able to come in behind them and build greenways. So we have a section of uh, Richland Creek Greenway, Mill Creek Greenway, and right now we're working on White's Creek Greenway, which is one of my you know, newest projects. It will connect Hartman Park over to Buena Vista, utilizing open space with canopy trees and just wide berth of, of green space and White's Creek. Nice. Uh, to build about a mile section of Greenway. So we just got a consultant on board. We've done our first site walkthrough as a team. We'll have a, our first public input meeting in May. We haven't totally firmed up the date, so I'm not going to say it until <laughs> I know for sure. Uh, but we should know here in a few days. Uh, so we'll start with community input there. Uh, yeah, so I sorry, like I said. Go Thank on. you so much. Um, is there a place or a list you can like where we can go look at which greenways are complete and then which ones are like in planning and then how we can um, see it? Because for me, with Geodis, a lot of people are biking and then, and we're trying to encourage people to take multimodal ways to mm -hmm. Geodis Park. Um, and I was just wondering where I can get all We that are much. updating it. Headed to the printer now, our okay. Greenways map is partnership with Greenways for Nashville, uh -huh. our friends group. That will show um, an update of the completed Greenways and the ones that are that I'm talking about now that are, you know, in act that are active and coming soon. So we're careful about coming soon. We want it to really be you know, coming soon. Um, so that'll be a tool for you. Uh, Greenways for Nationals website is excellent. With my new folks, we're updating our Metro Parks webpage, which right now is really outdated. I hate to say that, but it is. And um, now we've got some folks who can tackle that. Well, I, I, that was a, I am so glad you came because <laughs> I don't know that we all collectively knew all the things. I only knew about Cheatham Rail Authority, so, <laughs> um, which is exciting. Yeah. But to hear that we're really trying to come up with ways to connect 
I know in my district we have some opportunities, so I'm looking forward to creating a green a greenway in Antioch. So, um, I'm sorry. Is anybody here on the Greenways Commission? Uh, yeah, almost everybody. Who, okay, I didn't know who all was on. I didn't know who all was on the Greenways Commission. So. Yeah, it's one of those things that when I was a councilman, you don't, re you know, you're working on your own stuff, you don't realize all the stuff that's going on, and then you, exactly right. then you talk to Cindy, and you're like, holy, holy, there's a whole lot of stuff going there's on. There's so there. much going on. <laughs> yeah, we've got about 10 miles of development, and that's between uh, the capital projects and developer-driven projects. I know you don't want to hear me talk for hours, but if you have the time to go back and look at the recording from the Greenways and Open Space Commission December meeting. We did a recap and, you know, since it's recorded, the beauty of that is you can fast forward and get <laughs> anything that you don't want to listen to, but it was pretty comprehensive. Um, Perfect. And then any of you are welcome always to come to the Greenways Commission meetings. I mean, we're happy to, to have you there. Uh, they are recorded. Um, so Thank you, Cindy. And Kevin for bringing us in. Anytime, y'all know y'all call me anytime. <laughs> I appreciate it, and I love that you don't have a request for the budget. So that's uh, wonderful. <laughs> not that's this like, time. Not this time. We'll we'll catch you next year. But this yeah. year, next year, we're in good time. shape. Fantastic. Great. Well, Great thank work. you for coming. And yeah. next up, we have Trey from the Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission. Hello, everyone. Uh, Trey McLarnon, uh, as said, from Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, my update will be quite a bit different I think, than yours. <laughs> different world. <laughs> different worlds. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief and then take whatever questions it is that you have. Um, we have the opportunity to be a leader in this region um, in film and music. We already are in music, but in film we definitely could be. Um, right now we're not a leader in our state in film, much less the region or the country. Um, I appreciate and am thankful for the formation of this commission. It's something that was long overdue. Um, but we are hamstrung considerably from making progress. Um, we have a budget that is not sufficient to co accomplish the simplest of tasks, and we don't have any ordinance authority to do anything with it outside of the task that we've been charged with. Um, the only thing that we were able to use that budgetary amount for, uh, which our initial formation budget was $100,000, uh, was to hire an executive director. The first thing that we did was go to Metro HR, who informed us that that is not an adequate amount to hire an executive director, and that we can't use the budget for anything other than hiring an executive director, which we can't accomplish with the budget that we've been provided. Um, it's below even Metro pay scales. Uh, Metro pay scale for an ED1 is $112,347, if I remember correctly, plus benefits, which comes out to 139000 and change. So even just for hiring the base position that we have, we're below the published Metro pay scales for the year which we created, uh, much less hiring any other staff or accomplishing any tasks. Um, and even if we wanted to try to repurpose the budget that we were provided to hire an administrative assistance, we have no ordinance authority to do so because the only thing we can use the money for is an executive director. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have difficulties as far as quorum is concerned because we have never been a full commission since our formation. There have been vacancies continually throughout. There's still three vacant seats right now, um, which is being addressed, is my understanding. But I, I come to implore also in that regard that it makes it difficult for us to progress because if you know we have a volunteer commission, if someone has work, something there's a conflict, then it makes it very difficult for us to meet quorum when we have multiple vacancies on a relatively small group of people. Um, uh, additionally, we are also, will be bringing this to council soon, working on uh, ordinance suggestion code cleanup because there is also significant overlap between our mission charge and an already existing office within the mayor's office, the Nashville Film and Special Events office, and the mayor's office has half of the same responsibilities that we do. Uh, which then also makes it difficult and confusing as to what we're attempting to accomplish. So we are addressing that uh, while also attempting to move forward with hiring an executive director uh, with budgetary proposals coming. Um, a as a point of reference, again, the Budget Committee is still working on those final proposals, but the number that I believe I've seen thrown out as far as budgetary concerns is between five hundred and five hundred and fifty thousand dollars as a as a minimum operating budget to be able to hire an executive director of staff positions and be able to accomplish basic basic work. So uh, again trying to be brief and direct because I know y'all have a busy night ahead of you. 
and then I'm happy to take questions uh, anything in regards to that. Uh, so, thank you, Trey. Um, and I know we do have questions, so I was going to jump in really quickly just for a little bit of background. Um, we talked about this when we created our list for this year, what we wanted to look at, so we literally just created this a year ago in June after about a two-year scenario. So the office was created that he's referring to. That office was created in 2022. That was the state of Metro. Um, in the mayor's office or correct, the commission? In the mayor's office. So currently so there happened? is still one. Yes. No, no, they're separate. So it was created. So I was doing research for a couple of years to figure out how we create our own office that really was going to be functional for all of our creative industries. So suggested um, to Cooper's office that we had an entertainment office. So that's kind of where it started. And so that was in February of 2022. And then in April, he announced that he was going to create that office. Um, so once the office was created, that's when I filed legislation to create the commission. So the commission could be over that office because one of the biggest issues that people said is not having an office that was controlled by a mayor so that it couldn't change with every administration. Um, one of the things that we have in Tennessee is the Memphis Film Commission and they've had the same person for 25 years because it's not under the control of a mayor. And that way you get to keep people that actually want to do the work in the position. So in having an office, having the commission, there's a current office called the Mayor's Office of Film and Special Events, which in essence is really a permitting office. That's all that Gordon Richard does. He's lovely, he's from NDOT, but this commission in the office needs an office that can do all the work for permitting for every single creative industry and also understand the business itself. So the cleanup that he's referring to is about how do we really honestly decommission that office so that we have the entertainment office and those, those functions of that office would get wrapped up into this new existing office. So you would want to move from probably funding or staff people so you can continue to do the permitting out of the Correct. commission. So you'd have to change the ordinance to actually. That's another question I have is like, what is actually, you've alluded to this, that what's the office, like what's the commission's uh, calling? Uh, it says the only authorization he has right now is to hire some ED. So in terms of in terms of budget, so what what we did last year, um, or actually in 22. So when the office was created, uh, former Mayor Cooper allocated $100,000 just to put money towards it to say, hey, we created the office. Started. Correct. Okay. But it still took us another year to get the commission created that would be over said office. And what is the commission's purpose? To market and promote. Um, creative industries with, within Nashville and basically be a beacon to say, hey guys, Nashville's permitting. great. You'd want to add all the other things of current so light that per exist in other... Per permitting is presently in our charge of tasks while also being in the charge of tasks for the pre-existing mayor's office. So in, in the, the mission statement for the ordinance that created our commission, it lists permitting as our responsibility while also listing it in the other ordinance, which is so what I'm talking about, there being conflicts between the ordinances, there's conflicts between the ordinances. That's the cleanup, yeah. is is the existing office, and that was a conversation even when we were talking about creating this, was that if the only thing that's happening is really permitting, because that's really all that's happening, then that, that is a function that can be wrapped up into the new office that's going to have even more functions than just permitting, but it has to be cleaned up by doing it through an ordinance. So the commission is going to bring forward proposals? So the, the, the commission right now is working uh, in combination with Metro Legal and the mayor's office to, to work on a proposed ordinance cleanup suggestion. Uh, and then once that has been done, then we'll bring something to council. But that is something that and I think you know, it would be really helpful of. too on the on the funding initiative from conversations with um, clearly you've already had a lot of conversations with HR and what competitive looks like, what competitive salaries, but um, that'll be helpful to under have that data when asking for funding of what I don't know, five hundred and fifty thousand dollars is who the executive director is going to be paid. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's based on four people. That five hundred thousand yeah. is based on. I didn't four. hear the other three people being referenced as staff, so it'll be just great to have that proposed, like that fully fleshed out. And then these are competitive Absolutely. based on how other commissions. I think are this year's goal is an executive director and one assistant. 
Yeah. So in total, you have a whole it's office a that has, yeah. because it's it's unfair. Yeah. And what we've done traditionally yeah. is give money to an office so that, that we have a director. Bit to get started and you get to get in no, there. No, no, and no. Get going. We give money for a director, and then they don't get to do their job because they're underpaid Same and they're no overworked help. and they have no help. So to create a new office, we need to have an assistant and we need to have a director. Right. But so it would be lovely to have that money. supported. So I guess my. But request to the commission would be first of all thank you for being here thank you for speaking and sticking it out and doing the work um, and then it'll be lovely to have all that information gathered on best practices how things are successful especially with all the research that has been done to make sure you're up and going um, of you know how to do that the right way and moving forward and what you think you can get out of it so it'd be lovely do you have the budget for those two positions to hand out today? I, I don't because okay. the, budget, the budget committee has not presented that right. to the commission. Uh, We're still working. Okay. Okay. Right. The, the, the charge to the budget committee was to prepare a, a uh, target budget, a stretch budget, and a, a absolute minimum budget to the commission for approval. Okay. Those proposals have not been presented to the commission yet for approval. Um, they, the intention was for that to have happened in April. It didn't happen as a result of quorum because the meeting was canceled because of we all showed up, there weren't enough people to conduct business. So, okay. here we are. Uh, my share vote. Well. Thank you. Um, now it's made, unless we can get a special meeting, and getting a special meeting is very difficult for us to do because of space limitations that are that are faced by all commissions. Understood. Vice Chair I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. Um, yes. Can you clarify, like, how many people total are on this commission? Yes. So the, the, the commission by ordinance is 15 people. Okay, there's 15. And so we presently have three vacancies. Uh, so there's 12 people, but you don't even have six show up. We have to have eight show up. You have to have eight. Because our, our quorum number doesn't change because of the vacancies. Exactly. Right. And there's four. I see. Yes. So that's why. It's, okay, that's why I was. Okay. Yes, that's exactly yeah. the problem. That's the problem. It is that, and it, even with that, we had more vacancies until recently. We just had okay. new members recently appointed. But so, I mean, for, there was a period of time where we had 10 members and we had to have eight people show up. And, um, and that's, <laughs> it's very difficult to conduct yeah, like, like business. Yeah. And then I just had a question because, like you said, Chair Styles, so the former mayor just gave 100K to the, like, to the commission, but. In the budget? In the budget. In the budget. Yes. In the budget. Our budget is $100,000 to hire an executive director. We do not have a budget for any other purpose. We have a budget to hire an executive director. The ordinance allocates that budget for an executive director position. We cannot hire an executive director because it's not enough money to hire an executive director, and we can't use the budget for anything else without changing the ordinance. I will, so let me touch on that. So, in creating the office, creating the commission, giving them the responsibilities so that they would be over the creation of the executive director position as well as being able to hire said executive director. So the $100,000 that was allocated, um, there were conversations in the beginning that some of that money could be used for some additional research in, in doing this work. Um, but even with only having $100,000 in getting that executive director position created, there isn't anyone that's going to look at that and say that we want to, either if they're here in Nashville or looking from outside, that they'd want to do it. So we'd have to give more money to that budget. Um, and in doing that, again, that is a cleanup of the ordinance to be able to add that additional position. That's fine. I'll be honest with you. Getting it across the finish line really became the ultimate goal. So these little things couldn't focus on because there was too much craziness going on. So now that we're here, hallelujah, it's been a year now that the money's just been sitting. And now as they're getting ready to want to hire someone, there's no money there to actually say, you guys, hey, why don't you come in? So one, we need more money in that office and to also clean up the ordinance so we can get the office taken care of. And, and I, I want to be clear about two things, too, is that with anything, that was, I don't mean any of this to be a criticism of the process that led us here, because that was a hard-fought and lengthy process, and I, I understand the difficulties that were there in, in that doing. Um, and then, two, also to be clear about the $100,000, that that's a $100,000 total budget allotment, which means that from a salary position, that's more of a salary of approximately $65,000, because it's 65000 plus metro benefits, which is approximately 100000 So. Yeah, and I think I was just confused why, like, this, how, um, I feel like stringent, like, the one thing you could do when it didn't even match with HR. So I'm confused, like, in the process, why were, you know, like, HR, why were they not consulted? HR, to, 
So to have that, so you would already know. I don't, I don't know. So I can answer that question for you. Should I do it online? I'll probably answer after we get offline so I can be as truthful as possible. Uh, again, getting this across the finish line was very difficult and extra items couldn't get done because it became crazy. Ginny, would you say that it was a good time getting this created? It was very difficult getting it created and, and the, the end game, the goal was really just to simply get it created. So those other questions, we didn't have any wiggle room or negotiating room and those kind of things. The, the goal was just to get this across and get this created and get this actually moving. It became, there were a lot of uh, weights that were holding things down and preventing forward motion. So that became the sole goal, which is to actually get this created and moving forward, knowing that we would be facing these kind of issues. Exactly. Moving forward. Okay. So um, we're going to play clean up. Okay. No, my new to goal make it was work. to make it work. Great. Right. Appreciate it. And Trey is, is a lawyer. Former I, lawyer. It, Former lawyer. I, but I, I am a current licensed lawyer. Okay. I am no longer a practicing lawyer. I retired from litigation to make movies. Um, Sorry, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, felt like good, it felt like a good idea at the time. Uh, have you seen Monkey Man? Did that matter? No, yeah, yeah, no, that yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, so yes, I am still I, I am still a licensed attorney and, and do legal consulting, but I'm not a I'm not a practicing attorney any longer. Councilmember Welsh. Thank you. Do you know why so many of the commissioners are not showing up to meetings? Yeah. No. I do. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. And uh, that, that gets into a secondary question that as far as that is concerned, we have no control over that anyway, as a commission. We, we have no we have no disciplinary power truly in regards to that based on what's in our ordinance and whether those people could you know what happens in regards to the attendance is not something that we that has been a point of discussion but it's not something that we have any authority over as it stands right now Council do you have um, the records of people who have shown up that I do I, I'm the secretary for the commission okay. so I there I have the attendance record could, could they're, you, they're within the minutes of right the, could, could you share that with us because I would like to see if it's consistently the same commissioners maybe we need yeah. to like commissioners who aren't yes. showing up yeah. Um, yeah. because something that basic yes. as having eight people even just to approve a budget to have some movement happening we have to know that's going to happen otherwise I, there's I know, no point I know it's in some ways that there was change in the composition of the commission from the beginning there were some people who were appointed who weren't showing up who now no longer are commission members I think that they have that is one of the cleanup or, items yes. that you all will be seeing at our next meeting and then there are some people who have missed, uh, who are very committed and very dedicated to the commission, who have missed several meetings based on the nature of, of the work that we do. If you're, you're on a feature film, you may be gone for two months. Or recording an album. Or, or recording Beyonce. an album or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so there have been people who are quite dedicated and have been very active participants who have still also missed yeah. a considerable amount of time due to the nature of the work. Are there other, are there other, any other questions? Did you have a question on another one? Um, it's fine. I, I think we can address it later. It's just okay. then because we need to have different types of meetings then, right? I mean, like, or... Yeah. And I'm also happy to make myself available to answer whatever questions are necessary. Jasmine, are you, are you good? I'm good. Okay, awesome sauce. So I guess my request of you would be, as we're getting ready, I, the, the mayor's budget will come out May 1st. We have to... We will start to get our budget wish lists together. Um, and so as we talk about as a committee, the different organizations that have come before us and had requests, going to need to have what you need for two positions really soon. So if you need to call a special meeting, figure it out, because I'd hate for the budget to go by and just not be able to provide something so you guys can get started, because that would be another year of nothing. I know. I, I agree completely. Yeah. Yeah. Although this past year wasn't nothing, because we had to get you started and get you appointed, which didn't happen until August. So it, you're cranking. It's just yeah. getting doing all the cleanup that we couldn't do beforehand, getting it done simultaneously is difficult. It's been a lot of administrative work so far. Yes. So thank you very much for coming out. I appreciate it. And anyone have any questions before we adjourn? Okay. And our meeting is over. Thank you all so very much. Thank you.